I just picked up this Harbor Freight 5,000 watt Predator inverter generator, and I'm gonna show you one of the mods I'm doing here. There's a couple basic ones I'm gonna be doing that I do to all of the generators I have. I've got some campers, I rent them out, and so I've got several generators that can go along with them. Somebody needs it, so this is just another one I'm adding to the fleet. The normal things that I do to all of these are I, I run synthetic oil in them after a break-in period. I run a magnetic dipstick in them to help collect anything since there is no filter in these. And then I also upgrade to an NGK spark plug. I will put a link in the description to the NGK spark plug as well as the magnetic oil dipstick cap. Uh, but I'm not going to cover those in this video. In this video, I'm going to cover um, tying the neutral to the ground. This is something that you can buy a plug to do, and it varies. I think it's not hard to spend 20 bucks on one of them, and that's not a ton of money. But uh, then you also have a plug that's floating around with it that you need to plug into your regular 115 volt outlet and uh, on the front of the generator. And if somebody is renting these from me, which they do, if I've got those plugs floating around, it's just one more thing that can get lost. So I like to tie them together internally because it's incredibly easy. You do it once and then you're done. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. One thing I'll point out right at the beginning of this video, the reason you would be doing this ground to neutral tying is if you are using an EMS surge protector, they do not like the floating ground that these generators have. Since this generator is not literally tied to ground, like a house would be or a normal power source at a campground, uh, they will not turn on. They literally will go into a fault mode because they're not seeing a ground and therefore the system just won't work. And you can put them in a bypass mode. If you've got a Progressive Industries EMS surge protector, you can flip a switch from normal to bypass, but then it's not doing anything. It's doing none of the protecting that you bought it for. So that's why you wanna tie the neutral to ground. So it'll do all the protecting without throwing an error code and not turning on due to the floating ground. It's pretty simple. I've got about four to five inches of regular standard solid wire that would be used at a home for 115 volt circuits. And I have crimped a ring lug onto one end. I'll put a, a link in the description for some ring lugs. Uh, you can go to probably any auto parts store or hardware store and buy a little pack with a few of these. And this is all that we need to tie the neutral and the ground together. Got my 12 volt Hercules cordless impact here with a long number two Phillips bit. We need to pull this panel off. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the fuel selector knob. We'll back that screw out that's buried in there. That's why we've got the long bit and we can remove that. Make sure we don't lose that screw. And then we've got six more screws all around the edge here. You can absolutely do this without power tools, but it's really quick if you're using power tools. Now that we've got all the screws out, we've got our panel free. So on this panel here, this is what we're gonna mainly be looking for. This is what you would plug your little ground neutral tie plug into. And all it's doing is connecting the neutral to the ground. So that's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do it from the back so you can't remove it, you can't lose it, and it's just done once. For better access, I'm going to depress this lock and unplug that, and then we can kind of flip this around. So here's the back of our outlet, and we've got ground right here, literally tied to the case of this, and we've got neutral, which is all tied together here. It goes right to this RV plug, and there's a terminal right here. So I think we're gonna have the best luck just putting our little jumper straight into this terminal that already is linking a couple things together and then running it to this ground right here. I'm gonna take a number two Phillips and loosen up the neutral terminal. We're going to take our little jumper and if you look here, I've folded that over so we got a lot of surface area 
and I'm not gonna be able to capture this, I'm quite certain of, but we're gonna feed it into this, this terminal and we're gonna put it below all the wires. The wires have, they kind of have a little piece of metal crimped onto them. And so if we go below that, that's gonna be the best pinch point. And it's definitely tucked in here a little ways, but <clears throat> I just got this wire fed in. Now we can come back up here and tighten this terminal down. We want to get a good angle where we can get that just as tight as it was to begin with. And then we're going to grab onto our jumper we've added. We're going to pull on it a bit and make sure that it's in there good. And this is definitely in there good. It's not moving anywhere. Then I can bend it around here and route it over to our ground terminal. I've got a 10 millimeter nut driver here. We're gonna loosen this up. The whole thing will become loose, so I'm gonna kinda hold the front side of the panel. We'll remove the nut, we'll remove the lock washer, and the regular washer. So we got a lock washer, a regular washer, and the nut. We'll slide our jumper on here, and then we'll put our Regular washer, lock washer, and nut back on. We'll get it started. It's a little bit of a handful. And then we'll grab our nut driver and we'll tighten this back down. All right, now we've got that installed. We'll inspect it, make sure that it's not going to be contacting anything else. It looks pretty good. I'll push it around just a little bit, but now we have tied our neutral to our ground and we can put this panel back in. We'll flip it over first. We'll get the one harness plugged back in that we unplugged. We'll make sure everything lines up right here. We've got our propane line right here. We'll get it back into place. And we'll start all these panel screws by hand. And then we'll tighten them down. And then we can reinstall our fuel switch. Make sure we install it in the position that it was at when we removed it. Tighten down the screw. Make sure that works. Looking good. We can put these covers back on and we're good to go. Now we're all set up ready to go on any RV with any EMS surge protector. This will not trip a fault and it'll work as intended. I also want to mention that the reason you should not do this is if you plan on using it as a backup generator for your house. I will be doing nothing but using it on my RV. I have a separate generator for my house, so we know that that's all we're going to be doing with this one. But that would be a reason to consider not doing this if you ever were going to be doing anything else with a generator. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.